Hello gamers and welcome back to another episode of Solo Spelunking and today I want to continue my Dragonbane solo RPG campaign Alone in Deep Fall Breach. And um, yeah, just uh, a little recap. Uh, I was actually defeated last session in the final waypoint of the first mission of this uh, solo dungeon delving campaign. And thanks to a comment, um, I was reminded of the fact that as a solo hero, I have some, um, yeah, some opportunities or abilities that might prevent my demise, my death. So I can actually rally myself and I can try to to uh, tend to my own wounds. And um, I didn't know that or um, I forgot. Well, anyhow, I was reading up on the rules in the rule book, page 50. And um, indeed, I still have some... Um, yeah, I still have some or a slight chance um, of getting out of this uh, alive and by my own actions. So I will try this now um, and just continue. Um, but still what happened happened. So the cultists, they defeated me and they defeated Gorum. I do not know yet if Gorum is actually dead or if he may be also just uh, be um, is he or uh, so let me let me get my words straight so i don't know yet if he's really dead or he, if he's also just seriously injured and i can maybe heal him as well um so we will figure this out and then we will go from there um yeah let, let me just see yeah his name is gorum so i always forget the orc's name but his name is Gorum. So that is the situation. So the cultists they left, they took their gear and, and went this way where their encampment was because yeah um they thought we were dead and they they needed somebody alive for their ritual so um we still um crossed or or um um we still hindered their plans so um yeah so they left but the question is what what is with us so um uh let's see i got my what is it uh, do i have some sort of, of a healing role yeah i got a healing role but i'm not not that good at healing so first i can roll against willpower to try to rally myself that means uh, i could keep on fighting even uh, if i'm at zero hp and this is where i'm at the moment and uh, at this point, I uh, usually need to make uh, death saves, and so first, let's see if I can if I can rally myself. I roll against my will. Oh, it's a six. Yeah, I can. So my will is nine. So uh, uh, even though I'm at zero HP, I managed to to rally myself and to. To get up again, um, grit my teeth, fight through the pain, apply pressure to my wound. Um, let me check this real quick here, page 50, how this works again with the death rolls. I think it is versus 10. Um, no, against my con, death roll against my con. And after three successful death rolls, I will recover d6 HP. And after three failed death rolls, I die. All right, and I can um, save my life. I can try to save my own life. When you have zero HP, another person next to you can save your life with a successful healing roll. Without bandages, they get a bane to the roll. This counts as an action. Um, you cannot save your own life this way, even if you have relied. See above. But the solo rules state that I can as a solo hero. Uh-huh, all right. Um, let's see, uh, another person can save your life with a healing roll. If the roll succeeds, you recover d6 HP. All right, so, um, yeah, I rallied myself. So, um, let's see. Uh, so, I rallied myself uh, and I tried to, to improvise some, some bandages from... Um, 
Well, this one cultist is burned and the other ones, they escaped. So, mm, do I have, I think, do I have a cape or something? Let's just say I, I got something to improvise bandages with so that I do not get a bane. My my healing is, is, is bad anyway, so I got healing five. So now uh, I try to save my own life with a healing roll, uh, hopefully um, recovering some HP. And this is based on intelligence. Uh, 14. Uh, okay, so I, of course I fail, but um, do I want to push the roll? Um, yeah. I try to, to push the roll once and I will suffer in condition. I will be exhausted. This fits, so I mark exhausted. And I try it again. I push the roll. Uh, I only have a slim chance, but, but anyway, so... Uh, oh no, it's a demon. <laughs> uh, it's a demon. So, um, yeah, I am not able to, to he heal myself. All right, let's see. Uh, so I, I crawl over to, to Gorum to see if he's still alive. And um, while I'm doing this, I'm going to make death saves versus my con. And... Um, yeah, I just marked them. I made a little character log here with HP and willpower and also coins and stuff. So down here, I will put death rolls. All right, and here we have S for success and F for failure. And I make circles. And then I just check them. So uh, while I'm crawling over there, I just make death rolls, hopefully getting three successes. Before I get three failures, my con is 11. Uh, two. That's great. That is one success. So I mark off one success. Uh, uh, so I push on. I try again. Uh, or I make another roll. Damn, 13, that is a failure. Ugh, I'm still on the brink of, of death. Uh, uh, 14, no, come on. Uh, ah, 12. Uh. All right, so three failures. So actually, this would really mean death. I tried everything. I rallied myself. I tried a healing roll. I pushed it. I failed. But like I said last time, since I just started this campaign and I like the character, uh, I will give me one more chance. So in this mission, I will have um, stone gaze step in. So uh, while I'm crawling over here, uh, I feel that I'm I'm losing consciousness again. It just was was too much. Um, let's see, do we have a wolfkin here in these included pawns? That would be nice. Um, but I don't think so. Even though it is, I think, a playable race, we do not get any, any wolfkin pawn, which is actually a pity. Hmm. Damn. Oh, wait. Oh, what's this? No, I don't think it's a wolf. <clears throat> Alright, so there's no, no wolfkin pawn. Then I just take, um, I take the first pawn here. It doesn't really matter. So, um, uh, while I'm losing consciousness, uh, yeah, stone gaze. He steps in, so he has seen, he's had a vision, he has seen my my peril, my defeat, basically, and he headed down into the breach because he himself was once a famous adventurer. And, yeah, he, uh, he saves me, so um, I get to recover 1d6 hit points. 
so he stabilizes me and he's got a healing potion with him and I do get four hit points back so it's a magical healing potion so um, my wounds um, they close and um, yeah I do um, regain consciousness and, and come back basically to life from the brink of death and now the question is what about Gorum? Is he dead or not? So I just use the Dragonbane trusty d6 one, two, three, he's dead. Four, five, six, he's not. Uh, and of course it's a two. So sadly he is dead. So um, for him all help is too late. He is dead. Alright, but um, let's see. So he he knew something maybe. There's this burned corpse. Maybe we can can find something useful there. So, but let me first read up on the mission again. Um, um, an orc named Gorum, the location of the cultist outpost, and may serve as a valuable ally. All right, the cultist's outpost. Okay, so. Um, he is dead, but maybe we find some clue here, maybe on the dead cultist, um, maybe not all is burnt, or maybe he's got some some other uh, item, artifact, or, or, or trinket that we could use. Um, so let's roll again the trusty d6. 4, 5, 6 is good if we find any clue on the dead cultist regarding maybe the location of the outpost or anything. Of course it is a two, of course not. So this cultist, he is burnt to a crisp and, um, and we don't find any clue. So that just means I will, yeah, I know. So um, I think I will just Insert another custom generated mission, a short mission, 1d3 waypoints, where the goal is to, to find some other clue about the whereabouts of the cultist outpost. But first things first, we, we need to rest and recover. So sadly, we can't do anything for Gorum and Tom. Um, but we decide not to leave him here. So since I'm weak, I can't carry him. But stone gaze, he will carry him, and we will head out of the of the breach and back to the chapel for now. And so now we're back at the chapel. So get rid of this. So, but still the chapel, it also featured like this table where all the maps are. So, um, yeah, we are up there and we, we carried him, Gorum, and um, gave him a burial in the chapel's backyard. And now I need to, to recover. So I'm, I still got a ration and, um, yeah, and even though my wounds are closed and healed, um, I'm still weak and I need to recover and basically take a shift rest. So uh, I need to sleep. And while I'm doing this, um, Stone Gaze, he tells me that he will um, yeah, try to, to get a glimpse or a hint of a, another possible location where I might find a clue. So this will be then the next mission that I will generate using the random generation rules for waypoints in here um, to recover a clue. But now first we will, um, yeah, we will, I would say gain a level, but we do not have levels, but we can improve our character because even though we were defeated, um, 
we gained some valuable experience and I wanted to try these um, these um, character improvement rules out. So it says gaining experience as detailed in the rule book. Each time you roll a dragon or demon when using a skill, tick the checkbox next to that skill. So I did. I got two checkboxes here for awareness and spot hidden where I think I rolled a dragon. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter what I rolled, but I got two check marks. All right. Um, in addition, gain five advancement marks for skills of your choice when returning from a successful mission. So I returned from a mission, even though it's not successful, but I'm still alive. So I would count this as some sort of success. This alternate reward replaces the standard system of advancement at the end of a session in group play. Okay, so I don't know exactly what the difference is right now, but doesn't matter because I will not play this with a group. I'm pretty sure of that. Um, make your advancement rolls between missions, rolling a d20 for each mark. If the result exceeds your current skill level, it is increased by one up to a maximum of 18. When you're done, erase the marks and start over in your next mission. As a standard, when you increase a skill level to 18, you gain a heroic ability of your choice. In addition, within the Alone in Deepfall Breach campaign, you may, no more than twice, reward your character a bonus heroic ability for a valiant sacrifice or astounding success on a mission. All right, so this does definitely not apply for the first mission. Um, yeah, so five advancement marks for skills of my choice. All right, so let's see. Um, it may make sense to to maybe use skills, or or use skills that we um or that we actually used. So spot hidden. I will increase healing because I tried to save my life. So that will be one mark. I will try to increase evade just because I already tried to use it and it failed, but it's such a valuable skill. Um, I will try or I, I will try to improve bushcraft because I read a little uh, I read up on the rules and bushcraft is actually pretty important if you play outdoor adventures or overland travel. So that's three. I got two more. Um, knives 14 I think is good enough but um, I even though I didn't use it I do want to get better with swords as well so this is four and finally I got one more um, well I did try persuasion in the very beginning uh, while I was still in outpost I think is the village called um, or was it um, I think it was outpost. Um, uh, what else? What else? What else do I do? Hunting and fishing. Huh? Bartering. Beast lore. Hmm. I did use sleight of hand as well, but I mean, 14 is already pretty high. I mean, I need to roll higher. So I need to roll a 15 to try to, to increase the skill, which is not... Um, not that easy, so I better uh, stick to skills that I have a better chance of maybe improving. Hmm. Hmm. My bows is pretty good. Ooh. What do I do? I think uh, I take hunting and fishing, hunting and fishing, because it, it, it goes along nicely with bushcraft. So let's see again. Uh, I only get one roll, right? Um, make an if the result between missions. Okay, uh, let me check this up on the rules again. If I only I have one roll. Um, experience hmm uh, derived experience 29 
page 29. And, all right, so advancement marks. Uh, place another uh, the GMS a final word. And after placing your marks for each of them, if the results, once you have made your erase the marks. All right, so I only get one try. All right, and okay. So uh, let's see for the ones that I um, where the base chance is. The core skills, where is it? Here, the base chance I need for the ones that I have not trained yet. All right, so mm, advancement roles. I start at the top. I start with awareness and I try to improve it and I need to roll an 11. Please. Yes, exactly, an 11. <laughs> so my awareness, it increases to 11. All right, now bushcraft. I need a six. It's a 14, yes. So bushcraft is increased as well to six. Next up, we have evade, and this is a tough one. I need a 15 or higher. Of course, I only got a seven, so no increase on my evade skill. Damn. Now healing. That shouldn't be too bad. I need to roll above five. Fourteen, yes. So healing increases to six. Six. And... Now, hunting and fishing. It is based on agility, and agility I'm pretty good at. I got agility 17, so my base chance is 7. So I need to roll above 7 to get it to 8. Let's see. Oh, and I roll a 3. Damn. All right, so no, but I put the 7 in here as the base chance. All right, and now spot hidden. It's uh, a five. So nine, yes. So this increases to six. And finally, swords. I need to roll an 11 or higher. And of course I roll a three, so no improvement there. All right, so that's my advancement. So um, yeah, I'm taking a shift rest, so uh, the equivalent of a long rest in other systems. And here it a shift rest, it heals all your hit points and conditions. So this is actually pretty nice. Um, let's look it up again. Healing and resting, a shift rest. A shift rest lasts one full shift and can only take place in a safe location. Yes, during you recover all your lost HP and willpower and heal all conditions. Yeah, so I take a shift rest. So I heal all conditions, so I'm not exhausted anymore. No longer exhausted. And my hit points are back to their maximum of 11. And my willpower is back to nine because I used or I tried to use my ability, my uh, fast footwork, but it didn't work. But um, so now I am fully rested. And while I was resting, um, Stone Gaze, he gazed into the breach and tried to 
to find an alternative way of gathering some clues or information about the cultists whereabouts so i will have to go on a on a in between mission so to speak and it'll feature 1v3 waypoints so let's see let's create a mission 1d3 oh, obviously or of course it is a six so three waypoints and i will mark or or um yeah do this in my trusty journal so um insert new mission new mission to gain info and it features three waypoints all right let's see if stone gaze has a clue on any of the waypoints so i roll 1d6 for every waypoint and on a four five six he knows something about it first waypoint is unknown all right so um three waypoints waypoint one dot uh, colon is unknown all right waypoint two let's see if he knows something about waypoint two Oh yeah, he knows something about waypoint two. So we check this out in a second. Known and waypoint three. Is also known. Okay. So let's figure out some details about these waypoints that Stone Gaze knows something about. Du -du -du. Locations first. Your missions. Boop. Exploration tables. Area table. Let's see what the first waypoint is. Uh, the second, excuse me, first waypoint is unknown. Two, oh, an ancient tomb. That sounds already exciting. Ancient tomb. And the third waypoint. is a 20 a yawning chasm all right that i have to cross all right so um first waypoint is unknown then it is an ancient tomb leading onto a yawning chasm and Let's see, there was something here about um, about uh, threats, possible threats, mission threat. Let's, let's see what the threat is. This is unknown to me. Two, this region is prone to tremors and cave-ins. When the threat triggers, you face a catastrophic quake. All right, so the threat on this mission will be a catastrophic quake. All right, threat is number two, the quake. All right, I will not determine any more details about these um, waypoints. Just that at the end of the yawning chasm, um, there is, uh, let's see, it, it's got to be something... Um, that that might give me a clue so it is contents 
danger environment so there will be something in there that gives me information it'll be it'll be abandoned supplies yeah one of the cultists um let's say he didn't make it he was wounded and he he died there and and they left his body something like that so abandoned supplies that that will include information because that's the goal of the mission abandoned and supplies all right so at the in the next morning or at the end of my rest when i'm finally rested and and um and well enough stone gaze he approaches me and he says uh I hope you are well rested. It is said that we couldn't do anything for Gorum. It was too late. But I'm glad that you made it back alive. Well, I can just hope that you are still up for this important task. Because there is still work to do. While you were resting, while you were asleep, I tried to gaze deep into the breach to gather some more clues that might help you on your quest. And I have seen something. I have seen an ancient tomb leading on to a yawning chasm. Over this chasm leads a bridge. I can't tell you if it is safe, but it looked intact at the end of this bridge. I saw one of the cultists. I think he lay there dead. Maybe if you examine his body, you will find the clue that we need to discover the cultist's outpost now that Gorum is dead. It is not far from here. I have seen the way, but sadly, my vision is clouded. I do not know what lies before the tomb, but I can point you in the right direction if you're up for it. Huh. So... <laughs> I'm looking pretty pretty wary, you know. Actually, I, I wish I could say no, but if it's as urgent as you say, and so far I didn't really have anything to show for my efforts except this nicely crafted Warhammer. And um, thanks to your help, I am well rested and uninjured. So yeah, I will try once more to gather some clues about this cultist outpost. Just point me in the right direction. Where can I start? And then we will go from there. Yeah, that is good. Follow me. All right, so I follow him and he leads me um, down again into the breach. And here, actually, I read how this works. Um, you descend a crumbling staircase into the chasm, braving the dizzying heights. A twisted corridor leads from the cliff face into the heart of the breach, emerging into what Ingolf called the vault of many paths. Here lies a great confounding hub of passages, branching from an ancient spherical chamber, its walls embossed with primordial battlefields depicting dragons and demons clashing eternally in stark relief. Innumerable tunnels run from the vault like veins through the stone flesh of the earth. You steel yourself against the perils to come. Take a moment to study the notes and maps provided by Ingolfer. Well, he didn't provide me with any maps, just with a vision. And step forward. Beyond lies your path for this mission. 
so he points me into or towards a passageway. I've seen this passageway. It'll lead to the tomb and the chasm. But I do not know what awaits you. Be careful, and I will try to watch over you like I did in your first mission. All right. Thank you, Stone Gaze. And wish me luck. And with that, I walk into the path to discover what the first waypoint now of my mission is. Let's see what lies ahead. So now it is time to determine what awaits me. It is a nine. So a nine is location table or area table. It is a forgotten library. All right, that is interesting. So forgotten library. All right, and now we will flesh out the details here. Waypoint one, let's see what, now we roll on the location details table, 1d4 times. Oh no, we roll 1d4 and then we roll that many times on the location detail table. This is how it works. One, only once, all right. So once on the location detail table. And we have content. And it's an eight, a fla flaming brazier. All right, so we come across a forgotten library. Forgotten library. Illuminated. by flaming braziers. By flaming braziers. All right, so I, I follow this passage and I see flickering light coming from up ahead. And um, uh, let's see, do I also do have, uh, yeah, I do have, I only have one torch. So let's just say Stonegaze provided me with a torch, but um, yeah, so I see the flickering light coming, coming from, from up ahead. So first I will be very careful. I will, um, put out my own torch because there's light coming from from up ahead and uh, maybe if there's somebody there I do not want to be seen and then I will sneak closer to get a look um, or to take a look to get a glimpse so let's roll sneaking that's something I should be good at And I barely make it 13 from 14, but that's all right. So I sneak up and um, yeah, I see this forgotten library up ahead. So the passage, it widens into a larger room. Into a larger room. like so and here we have bookshelves so these are bookshelves that are actually pretty high let's put another one here so these are what what appear to be bookshelves so um yeah i i sneak uh, and i duck into the shadows and let's uh, at these flaming braziers 
So one is here and one is here and provides light and another one is here. So these are the flaming braziers that provide illumination. So now we need to determine if there's actually somebody here. So it is a d6 roll, one, two, three, it's empty, and four, five, six, somebody is here. Oh, one, two, three, it is empty. All right, so it seems, or it appears to be empty. So I carefully enter the room but I try to stay in the shadows. All right, so let's determine, because there's gotta be something happening here. If there's nobody here, let's determine if there's a trap here, maybe. Maybe there's a trap. Mm. The breach is filled with deadly traps. All right. Hmm. So once again, one, two, three, it's a, there's, this room is trap, four, five, six, it's not. Oh, and it is not trapped. All right, so it is empty and not trapped. So seems like for once I actually do get a lucky break. All right, so, um, the threat, we need to determine the threat. The threat is um, one. Let's see if it's, does it start at one mission threats? Uh, starting at one, yeah. So the threat is one because now I will, of course, search this area because I'm a thief and I also want to, um, yeah, get some uh, something useful out of all these endeavors, uh, especially money. So... I will search. And this is a searching role and not, not a scavenge role. All right, so a search role because I search the area and I make a spot hidden role. Yeah, taking the time to search is risky and it requires a stretch and any active threats advance. But I don't care. So spot hidden is actually also pretty useful, but I only, yeah, I got six. So, um, I, you know what, I think what I did last time, I just wrote on the search table. All right, so I do the following. Um, I make a spot hidden roll because I, I might make it, and if I succeed at the spot hidden roll, I can roll twice on the search table and pick the result that I like. And if I fail, I just roll once. So that is, um, yeah, that'll be my house rule so that there will be something interesting happening. And the threat will advance to two because I do search. Can you see the threat? Yeah, I think you do. All right, the spot hidden roll, it's a 12. So I fail the spot hidden roll. That means I can only roll once on the search table. It is a six. Six is, oh, it is hidden treasure. Six, seven, eight hidden treasure, one treasure card. <laughs> yeah, so I am, that was good. So I was successful, I, I searched, so I, I will draw one of these nice treasure cards that I just shuffled. So I'll draw in front of the camera here so that you see that I'm not cheating. And this one looks good. Oh, armor shield. Roll 1d6. Oh, maybe because I'm not wearing any armor yet. Maybe I get some armor. That would be great. So roll 1d6. Oh, it's a four, a great helm. Mm. All right, I would have rather had studded leather, but 
the great helm. <clears throat> All right, so it is um, a helmet and a great helm. Um, okay, let's see the armor rating and where does it give me a bane on anything? Equipment. I, I'm not really a helmet guy, so uh, when I get back to it, I think outskirt was the, the village. I can't look at the map right now because I got my battle grid over, uh, over the map, but um, I think it's called out, was it outskirt? I think I will sell it. I, I don't really see my thief. Um, great helm. Armor rate. Oh, it is a hundred gold and rare. Damn. <clears throat> so worth a hundred gold. Let's see if I get that much. But damn. Whew. Actually, that's not a bad roll. Armor rating plus two. But I think, let me check if you do not... Uh, includes the amount if you can only wear one suit of armor at a time, but armor can be combined with a helmet. I do not think that the helmet alone does it grant me an armor bonus. It wouldn't really make any sense because um, that would mean that the enemies, they always hit your head or try to hit your head, but it's sort of like abstracted in the system. Um, so it gives you a plus one and plus two armor rating. 100 gold. Bane on awareness and all ranged attacks. Hmm. You know what? I need all the help I can get. So um, armor rating I just put down plus two. And it gives me a bane on awareness and ranged attacks. So I do uh, put this helmet on just for, for this mission. And, um, yeah, but I can, it, it looks well crafted and it looks like as if it would be worth something. So I might um, sell it when I'm back in outskirt. So, but now I need to traverse this library. So I was lucky. I mean, I did everything I could. I checked for enemies. I checked for traps. And even though the searching could have revealed an enemy or a trap, but it didn't. So, um, yeah, I was lucky for once. And um, and cross this library, which leads to another narrow path that I need to follow to get to the ancient tomb that I think was waypoint number two. Yeah, the ancient tomb. All right. So and thread two. All right. So I will end this session here, and I will pick this up shortly with waypoint number two on my inserted improvised mission. Uh, so I just make some some quick notes regarding the thread rating and what I did. And um, yeah, it's the weekend, so I will be uploading a new video shortly. So um, just a short Dragon Bane session. Uh, even though there was not much action happening, I hope you still liked it. Um, I did. <laughs> and um, yeah, so um, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel because it costs you nothing and it makes me happy and it helps me on my way and to my, my goal to unlimited YouTube power and fame. So uh, join me next time when I will continue. So the plan is that I will do around two to three sessions of Dragon Bane. Then I will insert something else. And then I'll continue with two, three sessions of Dragon Bane. And then again, put in something else. Because I want to yeah, keep some variety in the channel. I really liked my, my playtest of the game that I'm creating and um, but I think after three sessions for those of you who did not really 
like that content and where we're looking forward for to Dragon Bane. So I'm doing Dragon Bane, but I also got some other things in my head that I want to try. So I do want to keep some variety in the channel. Um, so even though if Dragon Bane is not really your cup of tea, uh, stay tuned because there will be other things coming up as well. But uh, the next video will be continuing this this Dragon Bane mission that I will post shortly. So um, have a nice uh, weekend and remaining day. And as always, thanks for watching and stay safe and stay healthy and bye bye.